And in my 25 years of teaching, I've seen that literally come to pass. In fact, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> switch gears here a little bit. I'm going to go back in time to when I first began teaching golf. So you recall I talked about when I was a 10-year-old kid and I developed my skill and I became a reasonably skilled golfer. Then I, I got out of uh, university and I began working at this indoor golf school in Calgary here um, called All Reds Golf School. And uh, I first was starting in club repair and building component clubs, uh, custom clubs. But they saw that I had a good swing and a desire to teach, so they started training me in teaching. And I would often get my education by listening to the other teachers teach. We actually had a, our golf school was an indoor basement warehouse with 10-foot ceilings, and they had built some 8-foot high partition walls to separate the, uh, the repair shop, the office, and then the teaching studio. They were kind of side by each, but separated by partition walls. So I'd be working on repairing clubs and building clubs, and I'd listen over the wall to the other teachers teach. So when I first started teaching, I had uh, a very structured, okay, we start with the grip, we get ourselves set up in the posture, and we put the ball position here, and we did uh, an eight-lesson series that had a smattering of short game lessons in it as well, but I had a system of getting people in their grip and posture and then training them to take a 90-degree shoulder turn on it face you this way so you can see it a 90 degree shoulder turn and what I called the power package with the extended arm the hinge wrists and it didn't matter based on your flexibility whether you came to parallel or not just so long as you've got that full turn the extended arm the power package angle here and so on so <clears throat> I had this one uh, woman who's probably in her late 40s early 50s and her daughter and they were having lessons and they were both pretty much beginner golfers when they began and so by the time we got to by the time we got to about lesson number seven or eight and uh, i was starting to talk about you know the differences with the woods and so on this middle-aged woman would set up to the ball she'd position herself and freeze and then i could see her eyes kind of darting back and forth, and she'd say still for what was literally about a minute and a half. So I'm a young green instructor. I don't know what's going on. You've probably already guessed what's going on. So I finally asked her one time, I said, why are you taking so long to make your swing? She said, <laughs> and this is one of those aha moments that I had in my teaching career. She said, I'm trying to remember all those things you told me. And I heard that and I thought, hmm, do I really know what I'm doing here? Am I actually helping people? Because she didn't really improve and, and make better shots. Her improvement was very sporadic and I don't know if she ever got it. Knowing what I know now, I think that basically she probably didn't <laughs> continue with golf because she didn't get anywhere with lessons from me. And so I began wondering about, well, how exactly do people hit a golf ball? And then... I had the uh, good fortune of being able to listen to my uh, mentor and coach, uh, Vance Allred. And I would listen to him teach over the walls and he would say things like, when you swing a golf club, the faster you can swing it, the better. A golf club should start going and it should get faster and faster and faster until it reaches a peak of speed right at impact. I'd never heard anything like that before. Everybody says, take a nice easy swing. He said, golf is a hand-eye coordination sport. It's essentially tennis or a racquetball or anything. And he would show people the scoring lines on the club face and say, see the strings? <laughs> and so as I began listening, I began incorporating some of Vance's concepts. And over time, his concepts have evolved as I had different teaching experiences into what I today call the real swing golf method. Uh, but ultimately, those experiences and many others that I've had in my quarter century of teaching experience have led me to believe that striking a golf ball is actually a very simple act of swinging a stick and whacking a ball with the swinging stick. So when you look at it from that perspective, and you've seen me demonstrate the hand-eye coordination skill in various ways, and as I, I've said in other videos, oftentimes when I'm doing this, people think I'm just kind of showing off or something. But in truth, you can do it too. 
anybody can. Uh, in fact, other YouTube videos I'm going to post, I'm just going to go along the range and have people do this little exercise uh, where I'll have them set up one ball here, one ball here, and I'm going to choose players who already have the skills, that usually better players. In fact, I did one earlier tonight, which uh, I didn't have my sound recorder on, so I, I, I scrapped the film. But I basically asked him, I said, well, well we're going to put a ball about a club head length apart here. I want you to position yourself correctly to this one. And then I'll say, but don't hit that one. Go ahead and hit the other one out there. And almost invariably, anybody who I see already has these, these skills can do it within about four or five shots. Once their mind wraps around the concept that they can actually do it, within four or five shots, they're hitting the ball just as cleanly and crisply as I, I do. Now, let's contrast that with uh, a premise that I call mechanical golfer syndrome. You see, you, virtually every golf teaching professional around the world, almost every golf instruction book video you'll ever look at or read, they all have the same basic premise about how a human being strikes a golf ball. And the premise is essentially this. If we grip like Tiger, get our posture like Tiger, position our knees like Tiger, position precisely exactly the right distance to the ball like Tiger, and then all of our parts look really, really similar to Tiger or Annika or some other famous professional golfer, if all of our parts are moving in the technically correct positions and motions, well, then that should make the club head swing freely and fluidly and fast and strike precisely on the middle of the face to within a sixteenth of an inch accurate of the center of the face, and long straight shots should be the result. It seems to make perfect sense, doesn't it? So, based on the premise then, you are essentially a biomechanical golf machine. And then, when you don't strike accurately, for example, hitting on the neck like that, you might have seen it shank off to the right, then, usually what is blamed is body parts. 